listeners, it's a very good evening to you. Right now we are joined up by uh, Honorable Professor Mavima and uh, you gave a very well detailed uh, account in, the, in terms of uh, the opportunities that lie ahead in your ministry. Can you share with our listeners what exactly you work on uh, these particular associations can stand to benefit? Um, the construction industry specifically can come in to help us with the construction of uh, the 2,000 schools that we have identified as needed in our primary and secondary education sector in order to provide uh, adequate, optimal uh, classrooms, specialist rooms like uh, laboratories um, to our learners in Zimbabwe. We have a shortage of uh, 2,000 schools. But we also have shortages in existing schools where a lot of them don't have uh, science laboratories or technical and vocational facilities, uh, ECD facilities that are age appropriate. We, we lack all those. Uh, so these are opportunities that uh, are available to our building contractors. Uh, a major thing that we have to do as a government is to unlock the funding uh, for, for this infrastructure and we are working on joint venture partnerships uh, and we are also working on creating an education fund through our amendment bill which is currently going through uh, the legislative process. So once we have that it means we can attract investors to say we have these funds that we are uh, mobilizing through the education fund. So uh, financiers should come, give us money up front, and then ourselves over a long period of time, we can pay back. It makes a lot of educational sense in the sense that uh, we build our infrastructure now. Our learners, the current generation, will get uh, an appropriate learning environment, but also future generations will get uh, an appropriate learning environment. And as a nation, we can use an intergenerational approach to pay uh, that, that money. We have to make sure that uh, the interest rates are concessionary. They are not uh, too much. In fact, they shouldn't go beyond uh, 4% uh, in order for it to be worthwhile. And uh, we have to make sure also that we are building durable infrastructure that is going to last uh, several generations. That's the only way it can make, uh, make sense. We want to deliver an education that uh, is fit for the 21st century, an education that can give us innovation, an education that can uh, deliver on, on the vision of the president, which is to bring this nation, this economy, to upper middle income status by 2030, and we need the infrastructure that can help us do that. What's your relationship like with uh, the local contractors? Do you reckon they have uh, enough capacity? Yeah, we have uh, the local contractors uh, engaged in the building of the 17 schools that we are building right now. We have not had a problem with their capacity. We are only experiencing problems now uh, because of uh, the, this instability uh, where we are failing to get things like cement and uh, things like bricks. But in terms of their own building capacity, we have not had a problem. They have, they have been able to deliver in a short space of time uh, on, the, on the 17 schools. The only delays that are coming now are coming because of uh, the instability that is in the in the market at the moment. You also encourage them to tap into the one billion dollars that is uh, given out by parents through fees and levies. What, what what basically I say is uh, that one billion dollars provides an opportunity to us as government in the sense that uh, if we work collaboratively with the parents. Part of that $1 billion can then be put into the education fund. Once it's in there, we have enough 
comfort for those investors who want to come now and give us money so that we can construct the initially the 2,000 schools that I'm talking about. Uh, as long as we have investors who are saying we are comfortable enough to give you money because you have this education fund, it means there will be unlimited opportunity for local contractors. At that level, uh, we would be thinking in terms of how do we capacitate our local contractors so that they can cope with the demand. So we really need to push as quickly as possible the whole idea of a basic education fund, which is part, which is in our education amendment bill, which is uh, going through the legislative process as we speak. Professor Melvin, thank you for your time. Yeah, all right. Good.